I think the biggest thing that I took away from Rocky Raccoon is Leadville for me was so much climbing and hiking that I almost wanted a redemption after Leadville. I was like, I actually want to see how far I can move my body running. Mm -hmm. And for Leadville 100, I probably ran 50, 55% of the time, hiked the rest. Rocky Raccoon, I ran 90 to 95% of the time. And if there was ever a straightaway or a downhill, I was running. Any uphill, I was climbing or striding it out. Um, but that last 40 miles, I, that's where I got a lot of the mental gain because it was as much as your body wants to walk and it's telling you, hey, it's okay to walk a little bit. Just slow down. Just slow down. Everyone else around you is walking. It's flipping that switch in your mind saying, now I'm running and forcing your body to run and keep running and hold that run or that little trot as long as possible in the ultra space. I think that's where you really get the mental win. Man, that's so good because I remember being on the trail and, you know, we would hit a, a certain point and maybe the person next to me would like start walking or the person in front of me. And for some reason, your first reaction is walk. And it took me probably after the, fir the first lap, first loop, I pretty much ran the whole thing. The second loop started to be more intentional, uh, just obviously again for me. Um, and when I say walk, I was really trying to like speed walk and stride out these like uphills, like big steps, just speed walking. Um, but man, like seeing people just kind of falling off left and right and I'm passing them. It, it's, it kind of gets in your head. Cause like, am I, for me, I was like, am I doing something wrong? Cause I'm, it's my first ultra very like, you know, naive. I'm like, am I doing something wrong? Am I pushing too hard? These people are going to pass me, you know, not that I'm competing against them, but they're going to see me, you know, at mile 50 and I'm just going to be bonked in there. But yeah, that's why I was, you know, walking slow and, um, and luckily that didn't happen, but man, it's crazy. And I think it's a deeper, you know, uh, I don't know if it's a problem, but just a deeper thought than even during an ultra is that uh, when you see people around you just kind of giving in, walking, um, you just automatically do it. And not that them walking is bad. That's part of their plan. That's part of their strategy. But I, I caught myself doing that a lot. I'd just be kind of striding, feeling good. And then the, hit a little uphill or whatever, a little stretch and this person's to start walking. I'm like, oh, me too. And then I was like, wait. So the second, third loop, I was like, no, like run them on race and it almost became a challenge that when I would see someone uh, kind of stop and walk and I would see them not accept defeat, but just kind of like, oh, I can't, I got to stop for a minute. I would then, like you said, make that conscious decision of like, no, I'm going to run just because I'm not going to just kind of fall into the same, um, just making the same decisions as everyone around me. Like I'm running my own race. And so that's an interesting point that you kind of dealt with the same thing because it's a very like, you know, intimate experience with all these people it's just you and one other person and then another person. And it's, it's very easy to take on their energy and like take on the decisions or how they look. If they look defeated, if they look tired, it's easy for, I take a lot of people's energy like that. And it's easy for me to kind of look at them and be like, oh, I'm tired too. I'm going to walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I had to, that second and third loop say like, start to now, nah, like I'm not tired. I'm good. I'm going to keep pushing. Like then just kind of like fire myself up and just keep moving um, and not kind of just fall pray to what everyone else was doing. So that's interesting that you saw that and you deal with that as well, but I'm glad I did pick it up. Yeah. Well, I experienced that at my first Ironman. I remember this. I'll never forget this moment. I remember where I was in the course. It was probably mild 17 of the run. You know, so the day was almost over and I was running in there were these two gentlemen that were, I was about to pass. Mm -hmm. And the one guy, they didn't know each other, looked over at him and said, Hey man, you tired? He's like, yeah. He's like, you want to walk? Yeah, let's walk. So they started walking. And because they had that, almost that empathy for each other, it gave them a justification to, I don't want to say give up, but let off the brakes or yep. let off the gas. To make that decision in that moment. Yep. I remember that too. I remember you talking about that right after the race. So that's very true. I remember that clear as day because that was the first thing like we filmed together. And I remember you, you saying like, dude, these two guys like, we're just talking and it was just like shocking to you. So you see it in all these yeah. races, you really see it in the ultras and for Rocky, my goal was just keep moving, just keep moving, just keep moving. Yep. And that's where like I find the win is because you are now, your body will only take you so far, even in an ultra, it doesn't matter how well you're trained at some point, your body's done mm -hmm. and 
mentally you have to drive through the rest of the race. It is so easy to stop and walk based off the people around you. And that's actually why I like when it gets dark, mm -hmm. like for, for a race, when it's dark, that is my favorite time because for me, all the distractions disappear. I don't care about the trees. I don't care about the train. I don't care about the course. I'm at this race for me and myself to see how far I can push my limits internally. It's like this internal um, intervention. That's the way I described it during, during Rocky Raccoon. So for you, what was it like when the sun came down, the headlamp switched on and it was dark and you were running based off of your light source? The greatest thing ever. It's epic. It's undescribable, man. Like that was what I wanted when I set out to do this race. I wanted to get to this low point where everything hurts and I just want to give up and it's painful and it just sucks. And I want to prove to myself that I'm stronger than I ever thought possible. And that now I'm not only going to get through this, but I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to, you know, give in in these moments when my body's like, oh, I'll just walk this part. You, you can walk the rest of the race if you want. I think that's, that's even another great point is, and again, it's all relative, but I, I got to the point where it was, I was very low in that low moment. I was like, I know I'm going to finish this. Now it's a matter of how fast and how well do I want to do it? Um, and so I made the decision, like, I'm not just going to walk in. I'm not just going to take it easy and just say, Hey, finish my first hundred K. Like I'm going to demolish this thing. Like I, at this point I want to cr like crush this thing. And so it was just those micro moments of every step, uh, knee hurts, this hurts, um, foot hurts. Um, this is painful. I'm hungry. I'm tired. Who cares? Like just get it done and get it done well and freaking crush it, man. Like that was, that was my favorite part of the race. That's what I set out for. That's what my intention was when I signed up for this thing was to get to this point where it was just overwhelming and scary and to prove to myself, like I have everything I need to get through this and demolish it, not just get through it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's my favorite part of the, of any race is when it's dark, you don't see anything, but your feet in front of you based off your headlamp. And, um, it's like, it's one of those things where who are you? When no one else can see you mm. or no one else is watching. Yep. What, what do you do? How does your character hold up? How does your mind hold up? Yep. And that's where you learn a lot about yourself is no one else sees you. No one else cares what you're wearing or can tell what you're wearing or what you look like when you're running or if you're crying or if you're smiling, it is your time to work on yourself yep. and find out what you're capable of. That for me is the most powerful. You know, I was on the course and, uh, there was this girl out there on the course. I don't know if she was doing the 100K or the 100 miler, but I could just tell she, it was probably one of her first races mm -hmm. and she wasn't a runner, didn't look like, but who, who am I to judge? Um, but she had a pacer and her pacer was her dad. Mm -hmm. And I could tell it was her dad's first time like out on an ultra course too. And it was getting dark and they had their headlamps on and they were just driving through. And I was like, this is, this is awesome. That's a relationship I want to have with my daughter where I don't care if she runs ultras or what she does, but they were doing this together and they were going to finish it together. And they were at a different point in their fitness timeline and, and career and evolution than anyone else, but it doesn't matter because they're going to get so much of a win out of that ultra, out of that experience. And it's all relative. Dude, it brings absolutely. It back. I love that because then there was someone three hours, four or five hours ahead of them that was, you know, crushing the trails, but they're going to go through that low moment. They're going to go through that pain, just like that, you know, that girl and her dad are, um, and they're, you know, just running through the dark all alone on the same trail as them. And even though they might finish, they might win the race. They overcame like the same thing that day. They went through that deep. They went through that pain. They went through that suck. Um, and it's special that you get to share that with people at every level while you're out there. Like I kept thinking about that, like, man, there's someone, you know, however many people behind me dealing with the same thing. And for them, it's a slow walk and they're going to walk the rest of this thing. And that's freaking awesome. Like that they're just going to finish. And then I'm thinking, Nick, you know, he's going for this time. And so he's going to go through this pain. He's going to go through this low moment, but 
for him, it's not just about finishing. It's about crushing this time. And so I kind of had to go in and, all right, what does that look like for me? Um, but dude, again, I love that about running. And I, you, you saw it at Leadville going up Hope Pass. Like I, I said, these old men just taking their time, go 10 steps, take a seat, 10 steps, take a seat. But they were still doing it. And they were going through the same thing that the leader was probably going through, even though he was crushing the trail and flying, he's still battling those. He's still overcoming stuff in his head. And that's cool to share that because I feel like it's really hard to find um, in other areas of life to like share that with people. And at the end of the day, I love it because it's, we chose to be out there. That kept going through my head more than anything was the fact that I have the choice, the fact that I chose to be out here. I have no place to play victim. Like this is my choice. I'm, I brought this pain on myself and I now I'm going to demolish it. I'm going to prove to myself that I'm stronger than I ever thought. And that was like probably what I had a lot of whys going into this. A lot of things that I, the reasons I wanted to do it and why I wanted to complete it. And that was probably the biggest thing was, dude, you chose me out here. This is your choice to bring on this pain, to be in this low moment. Now go prove to yourself what you're capable of. And I love that. That was great. I mean, that, that is one of the best parts. You get, you get to choose growth. Grateful, man. Growth is, is a choice yep. at the end of the day. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. And if you enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future releases. And if you want to watch the full episode, go right here and click on the video to my left.